Pine Grove's morning worship service again. I, I just want to say we're very happy that you're here by whatever means you're listening in this morning, or whenever you're hearing the service this morning. You're very welcome. We're very glad that you're listening in. Please go with me to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning and praise you, Lord, and just stand in awe of your wonderful Wonderful, wonderful being, Lord. And we can't even imagine why you would take the time to be here with us, Lord. But we know that you are, for you say that you will, wherever we gather together, that you'll be there with us, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, for all the wonderful things in our lives that you have provided, Lord, when we recognize it or when we don't. Lord, we pray this morning for the sick, for those who are all around us, Lord. It seems to be never-ending, but Lord, we know that you have the cure for the sickness of mind and body. And Lord, we know that you, you have that when, when we ask for it. And Lord, we beseech you, Lord, to heal, to heal those who seek your name. And Lord, we pray for the lost. Those that were uncaring this morning and each day, those who have turned from your way, and if they have once known you, Lord, oh Lord, they have set themselves on a path that is totally away from you, Lord. We pray for them. Pray for them. Each, you know, Lord, just put a stumbling block that they'll have to turn and look to you. Lord, we pray for those who've lost loved ones. And those who mourn, Lord, it's, you have the only comfort. Lord, we just pray for our country, for all the nations of the world, for all the leaders around, that they'll turn to you, Lord, for, for guidance. Lord, just again be with us here this morning. And touch me as I. Bring forth your word, have me to say what you would have me to say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, this morning I'll once again remind those who know and tell those who do not know. Our Savior Jesus Christ chose to suffer the most horrific death imaginable by crucifixion on a cross to become the perfect sacrifice for all the world's sin. The only sacrifice that could ever do all, all the little animal sacrifices that only covered sin. The perfect sacrifice of Christ can remove sin. He came to earth the first time for one purpose. To die so that all mankind can have an opportunity to enjoy eternal life. It's offered to all. Hebrews 2 verse 9 says, But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. So but by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Everyone. Throughout the world, throughout our community, throughout every community, there are suffering people that have never heard the simple fact that no matter where they're from, or what we've done, when we believe in our heart that Jesus is the true Son of God and put our entire trust in Him, hold nothing back, and become willing to let Him change our lives, we can be saved. And we can be saved from an eternity of punishment in hell. Nothing that men say or do can save a soul. That punishment is self-imposed by non-believers. And the question is asked, how will God, how will a loving God send people to hell? The answer is, sinful people send themselves. Because that sin has to be removed and has to be a sacrifice made for it. So those who fail to believe in this world, who fail to believe in that sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you're going to be very, very, very lacking 
on the day and very, very sorry when they find out the results for eternity. This morning I'm going to change a little bit, just a little bit from what we did. I want to, this may sound funny, but this morning let's talk about making a long range plans while we're living one day at a time. Uh, when I thought, of, I came to him and said, Lord, how can we do that? You know, that, that sounds like one of those, I think the word is oxymorons, one of those things that how can you make long range plans while you're only living one day at a time? But even when you go to thinking about it, even planning what we're going to do the next day is actually quite a long range plan. You know, when we're not guaranteed the next day, or even our next breath. But I do believe that God intends for us to make some long-range plans. And chiefly, that's the plan of living our life for Him each day, by following our Lord Jesus. Okay, to all those who are going to say that's pretty old-fashioned, uh, I say, okay, so it is. That is. That's a pretty old-fashioned way of putting things. But you know, we seek and serve and are loved by an eternal God. Not a newly invented idea. That's why when we people condemn the plan of salvation and they say it's old fashioned, good. Good. It's God's plan. It's His plan. Psalm 119 verse 89 says, Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You established the earth, and it endures. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. See, David understood the eternal nature of God, and that God intended good for all of mankind. If we look at the lives of Noah and Abraham and Joseph and Moses, the judges and prophets, they all tell a never-ending story of God's faithfulness and truth. All through, the faithfulness and truth of God is, is revealed. But also, there have always been those who rebel against the truth. Rebelling against making plans for their own eternal future. Remember, we're talking about making plans while living each day. Long-range plans. But these people reject that. And they've always been, and there will remain those until the end who will continue to rebel regardless of the pleading of the Savior. That is the terrible fact that the Word reveals. And it's going to be regardless of being shown by love the error of their ways, which Christ came to show us our errors. It's revealed in His Word. And He came to love us. And when, regardless of that, and regardless of the examples of the punishments on those who have followed evil before, and I've talked about that the last couple of weeks actually, you know, given a, a few of the examples of Sodom and Gomorrah and things that happened, those who followed evil in before. But these people, even until the very end of the world, there will be those who rebel. That's heavy on all Christians' hearts, it should be. Revelation chapter 9 verse 20 says, The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues. See, at the end there's going to be all kinds of bad things go along. Come along and the, the people will suffer. But the rest of mankind are not killed by these plagues and we're well into it. The rest of the passage says, Still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk, nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. That's going to go on to the end of time. We know that. But there's this pastor, John, I believe his name was John James, John Hawes, and many years ago he said this, he said, We see why it is so difficult to persuade impenitent men to accept the salvation of the gospel. It's because they do not feel their need of such a salvation. He said that a long time ago, you know, and the situation has not improved today. And in fact, it's grown much worse because there's more people 
and there are more and more false teachers who are bound, and they're out there railing and they're urging others to rebel. Come follow me, don't follow Christ, you know. They're urging a dependence on, or they could be urging a dependence on good deeds. That that'll, that'll work. But then they turn around and they deride those who are spreading, or endeavoring to spread the word of God. And even continuously they mock the very word of God itself. So that's what's revealed in Revelation, that that will go on until the very end. Making plans. What kind of plans? Because of that, and these things, you know, that they're continuously and being led to do by false teachers and falling into that. False teachers love company, you know, the company, I guess, that leading someone to destruction along with them. But so the non-repentant feel no long-range plans for their futures are necessary. Now, a lot of people in today's world think that at the very last something will bail them out. Something's going to come along uh, and just bail them out. But you know, the fact is that time is marching on until the end. And now, in our Bible studies, we have a little song that we do on uh, Thursday night about the chosen generation. Well, it's our generation's turn to stand in the breach each day. And we're to practice our Lord's command to love the Lord our God first and to love our neighbors. Well, loving our neighbors means to warn of danger ahead and not turn a blind eye. And that is a tough assignment. It really is. You know, making plans for the future, long range, but it's all part of it. It's a tough assignment in the assignment of separating a person in our minds from sin that surrounds our life. But it makes it easier when we begin to understand that that's the way Jesus came to look at us. That's how he looked at us first. He had to, to separate the sin in our life from the person, and he still loves us all. Not the sin, but every, every man, every woman. Isaiah 51 and 6 says, Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. Hear me, you who know what is right. You people who have taken my instruction to heart. Here's our encouragement for our plans. Do not fear the reproach of mere mortals, or be terrified by their insults. For the moth will eat them up like a garment, the worm will devour them like wool, but my righteousness will last forever, my salvation through all generations. Isaiah prophesied about the coming of Christ, the light and coming righteousness of those who would oppose the Savior. He, he, he prophesied of all of that. The coming, the light, the righteousness, and also those who oppose the Savior. Now, how part of the plan for the lives of those who follow Jesus is not to fear or worry about the insults and rantings of those who oppose. Well, they oppose God. And His word can never win against it. They can't never win against it, ever, when they oppose God and His word. Prophecy is going to hold true, clear to the end of time. Remember I said God intends for us to make some long-range plans. All right? That's where we started. And chiefly the plan of living our life for Him each day. By following our Lord Jesus. And following Him means loving, praying, and studying, and sowing by sharing the plan of Christ. Living that day, that long-range plan. Because, oh, where it leads to. It's so wonderful. Christ put the plan out. He's in Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
You know, I've been looking at the believers' Bible commentary lately. I found this passage, and it explains it so wonderfully. It says, come, means to believe, to confess, and to accept the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. To me. The object of faith is not a church, a creed, or a clergyman, but the living Christ. Salvation is in a person. And those who have Jesus are saved as God can make them. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened. In order to truly come to Jesus, a person must admit that he is burdened with the weight of sin. And only those who acknowledge that they are lost can be saved. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is preceded by repentance toward God. And I will give you rest. Notice a rest here is a gift. I'll give it to you. It's unearned. It's unmerited. The rest of salvation that comes from realizing that Christ finished the work of redemption on Calvary's cross. It's the rest of conscience that follows the realization that the penalty of one's sins has been paid. Once and for all, that God will not demand payment twice. Wow. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. This means to enter into submission to His will, to turn over control of one's life to Him. Instead of turning that control of your life over to things of the world, to, to drugs, to passions, to all kinds of things that are evil. No. His yoke is enter into submission to His will and turn over control of one's life to Him. And learn from me. When we acknowledge His Lordship in every area of our lives, He trains us in His ways. He doesn't expect us to know His ways before we get there, before we, before we start. He trains us. Remember that part about praying and studying, that long-range plan? For I'm gentle and humble in heart. Because in contrast, just think about it in the ways of the Satan-inspired world which are so harsh and proud and ungiving and, and unbending. The true teacher is meek and lowly. He's kind. He wants us to come to him and learn. And you will find rest for your souls. So that's the rest that one experiences in the service of Christ when we stop trying to be great. All of us who follow him are just servants. We're, that's where we're at. That's when we rest. Because Christ is the leader. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. You know, that's a far easier long-range plan than the constant turmoil of the world. And it's a wonderful daily life. So that's what I was talking about. Making long-range plans while we live our lives. The long-range plan to following God. Following Jesus Christ. So if you're listening this morning and you realize that you're allowing anything to separate you from God and you've never made Jesus the complete Lord of your life, now is the time to remove the heavy baggage of rebellion because rebellion against God creates baggage in your life. More and more that you carry around with you. Wouldn't it be great to just drop all that? Drop that baggage of rebellion? Let Jesus direct your life. And there's no baggage. He's only going to give us rest. So, if you're tired of this morning's the time to surrender your whole life with all of its struggles to God by asking Jesus into you as your complete Lord. You know, week after week I give a little sinner's prayer and I don't care if you say it this way or not, but you need to acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God and He died on the cross and rose again for all of us. And you need to acknowledge that. And you need to understand that you've sinned. 
And you need to understand that that sin will be punished. And if you're still carrying it, you will be punished for carrying that sin. And you need to repent of that sin. And ask Jesus to forgive you for that sin. And he'll take it. And he'll bear it. You don't have to. Never go back to those things in your life that have separated you from, from God. Promise that you won't. Ask Jesus to come into your life, into your heart, as your Lord. And then thank Him for saving you. And mean it. And mean it. And stay with it. And then don't let it in there. Go out and tell somebody about what's happened, what's changed in your life. If you are in a church, get back in church. Because people fear away down a path of destruction. If you've been in a church, get back there. Help the people that are there too. Because we all struggle. But we don't have to when we give it all to God. If you don't have a church, find one. Contact us if you'd like. We'd like to hear from you. I love to see comments from the people who watch us on Facebook and on YouTube. And but you know, if you don't you want to find a church and you don't have one near you or you're right here where we're at, come see us. We're at Pine Grove General Baptist Church at 102 Silver Tree Road in Shirley, Arkansas. You can Google us. We'll come right up on your map. If you don't, can't come and join us here. Join us on, on one of our Bible studies on Zoom on Thursday or Sunday night. And those ways to get on that are on our Facebook page. Most of all, don't wait any longer. If you're down that long path to destruction, you better get a long-range plan made. You don't even have to make it. Christ has made it for you. You just have to adapt it. How much easier can it be? Heavenly Father, Lord, as we close this morning, Lord, just touch each and every heart that hears this message, Lord. Show them that your way is the only way that leads to salvation. That Jesus Christ is the Savior of all. That it's not too late for someone while they are alive to change their ways. And Lord, help us to understand that it's a sin, it's not the person. It's a sin. That you love everyone. And the sin has to go. Lord, go with us. We go to our homes. Protect us. Be with us. Bring us back again into your house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody have a great day. Remember to leave comments, share, and we'll see you again later, unless the Lord comes before.